the Stafford Voice. Profiles in history. He stood six feet, four inches tall, weighing in at about 250 pounds with a love of wine and food. Add to that a good sense of wit and humor. How could anyone tell this guy no? Benjamin Harrison V was born April 5th, 1726 in Berkeley Mansion at the family plantation in Charles City County, Virginia. He attended the College of William and Mary in Williamsburg, Virginia, but never officially graduated due to a family tragedy. His father was carrying his two sisters while upstairs trying to close a window during a storm when lightning struck, killing all three on July 12, 1745. Harrison left college to, uh, to return home to take over the family business. In 1748, he would marry his second cousin, Elizabeth Bassett. In total, they had seven children. Soon afterwards, he became a member of the Virginia Colonial House of Burgesses. In 1764, he was on a committee to draft an official protest of the Stamp Act. He was very conservative in how he liked to handle things. And Patrick Henry's calls for... Uh, Civil disobedience just didn't fit the bill. By 1770, Benjamin was among the first signers of an agreement among Virginia lawmakers and merchants to boycott British imports until the British Parliament repealed its taxes on tea. And he joined in sponsoring a bill that declared certain laws passed by Parliament affecting Virginia subjects in the colony. Late in 1773, the Boston Tea Party occurred and the British Parliament enacted punitive measures called the colonies in called by the colonies that is intolerable acts. Along with 88 other members of the Virginia Burgesses on May 24th, 1774, they signed a new association condemning Parliament's actions even agreeing to invite the other colonies to convene a Continental Congress. On August 5, 1774, as one of seven delegates to represent Virginia, Harrison set out, heading to Philadelphia, leaving his home state for the first time, arriving there on September 2nd for the first Continental Congress. Benjamin Harrison tended to gravitate to the older, more conservative of fellow delegates, while Adams was, John Adams, that is, was viewed as uh, more radical. And these two could not be more opposite. Adams generally shunned unnecessary things that brought pleasure. Harrison relished in them. He was more aligned with John Hancock, while Adams sided more with Richard Henry Lee. Now, opinions of Benjamin Harrison were all aligned. Benjamin Rush said he was, quote, a useful member of Congress, sincerely devoted to the welfare of his country. Thomas Jefferson thought his short speeches were the, quote, most successful remarks ever heard in Congress. John Adams even once admitted he contributed many pleasantries that steadied rough sessions. One of those sessions, for example, was when some were considering choosing John Hancock as president of the Continental Congress. For Harrison, Harrison, um, Hancock seemed too humble, so Harrison grabbed Hancock, a man the British so desperately wanted to bring across the ocean and tried for treason, And he put him in the president's chair. He said, quote, We shall show Mother Britain how little we care for her. Unquote. Now, when the Second Continental Congress convened in May of 1775, Harrison resided in the same Philadelphian home as did Peyton Randolph and George Washington. After George Washington assumed command of the Continental Army and after Randolph's death, Harrison continued to dwell there alone, albeit hosting many delegates so grandly he accumulated a debt he would spend the rest of his life paying off. His greatest honor at the Continental Congress was serving as chairman of the committee of the whole house. This put him in the position of chairing the del- the, the deliberations that led to the adoption of the Declaration of Independence. Even presiding over Lee's resolution on June 10th, 
1776 to declare independence. On June 28, 1776, Jefferson's draft of the Declaration of Independence was reported to Congress, who resolved on July 1st that it be considered by Harrison's Committee of the Whole. Adopted in its final form on July 4th, uh, Benjamin Harrison reported to Congress and delivered a final reading of the Declaration of Independence. It was unanimously agreed upon, and Congress resolved to have it signed by those present, which would later take place on August 2nd, 1776, during which Harrison joked with Elbridge Gerry, who was at the signing table, at the table signing, he said, quote, I shall have great advantage over you, Mr. Gary, when we are all hung for what we are doing now doing. From the size and weight of my body, I shall die in a few minutes and be with the angels. But from the lightness of your body, you will dance in the air an hour or two before you are dead. Unquote. Now, shortly afterwards, Harrison went back to Virginia and served in its legislature. From 1782 to 84, he also served as governor of Virginia. In 1789, he wrote about the, quote, the distresses brought on me by the ravages and plunderings of the British and have reduced me to so low, and that his service in Congress, quote, marked me out as a peculiar object of British vengeance, and which they did not fail to execute in the most outrageous manner when the fortune of war put my whole estate in their power. It was at the state convention to ratify the new constitution in 1788 where Harrison, being skeptical of a foreseeably large central government, would oppose it because he thought basic rights should be incorporated in the text. But like other people who opposed the constitution, he later supported it with the Bill of Rights amendments. In April 1791, Harrison was having a dinner party at his home in celebration of being re-elected once more to the state legislature. He fell ill and passed away, never recovering, on April 24, 1791. His son, William Henry Harrison, became the ninth president of the United States, and his great-grandson, Benjamin Harrison, became the 23rd president. And that is this week's Profiles in History.